people right now, maybe listen to this shit, they'd be motivated to go run. If it's cold somewhere where they're at, a lot of motherfuckers will shut that door, go back inside. That's motivation. It comes and go as how you feel. If you and your wife are good, if you and your kids are good, if you're good at work, you're motivated. I like a motherfucker whose life is imploded. Ain't got shit in life and says, still gotta fucking get after it today, man. That's what it's about. So that's when you move from motivation to driven to obsessed. And I want people to realize once you get to this portion over, over here, the driven obsessed part, you're unstoppable. And I have to always tell you this, man, because people hear my story and think this guy is sadistic. I realize how, how the brain works. I figured out how the brain works. I, I'm a scared kid, and that's what gives me so much power. I had no foundation, and I built this off of just researching the mind. The feeling you get is basically invincibility. You realize that you can't do it all the time. When you need to do it, I know I can go to a place that I can live in. And when you know that you can run on broken legs and you can do certain things that a lot of people can do, but they're not willing to do, this power, this sympathetic nervous system of fight or flight and you're fighting, it, it gives you this charge of energy of when you're sitting there at 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and you're duct taping your feet up because you're broken and you're doing it by yourself and you're going through arguably one of the hardest training in the world and these guys, most of them are healthy and you're going through it broken and you are at a disadvantage but you're still there you can feed into that and tap into that for a lot of power but if you look at it, well, I'm broken, man like, I'm not gonna make it but if you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here and I'm fighting and I'm gonna find a way to get through this because I have no other place to go. It gives you a lot of power. I thought it would, but what happens is, um, not just in SEAL training, but in life in general, when things start to suck really, really bad, my brain and a lot of people's brain, they, your brain says, we gotta get the fuck out of here. This is miserable. So anger goes away a lot of times when you're suffering because your brain just says, we gotta run. We gotta go. So that anger is not popping up saying, oh, I wanna show them. I wanna show those people. No, there has to be a much deeper. When I say deeper, it has to be down to mineral, mineral soil. It has to be down to that nice mineral soil where nothing can burn. You can't burn dirt. So it has to be down that low that literally is something in you that's at the core of your soul. And, but, you, but you don't find it unless you spend a lot of time with what you want to be in life. You, I, I can't give that to you. Right. You can't give it to somebody. When, when you find your true passion in life, and my passion for me when like, oh, I want to be now, I don't give a fuck about Navy SEALs, Army, I don't give a shit. I want to serve my country. I cared about, I want to be someone that I'm proud of. That I want to look at myself in the mirror because I was so disappointed. That accountability mirror I talk about, I was so disappointed in what I saw every fucking day. I wanted everybody to love David Goggins. And a lot of people did. I didn't love myself. But I knew a lot of us want to find peace first. So people say, man, you always talk about this suffering and pain and shit. I'm at peace right now because I went through that. You don't find peace first. If you do, Merry Christmas, more power to you. More power to you. I found peace on the opposite end of finding myself. And no one really finds himself without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every fucking day for doing right for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. It's hard. It is suffering it's in miserable. disguise, right? It's, it's miserable. <laughs> Once you make about $60,000 a year for your family, but let's say for you personally, additional income makes zero, has zero impact on your quality of life. 
zero. So why work 80 hours a week? Well, men will do it, some men, very few. A handful of hyper-competitive men who are obsessed with hitting the pinnacle of the given dominance hierarchy they're in will happily work 80 hours a week and they'll forego everything else, relationships, family, children, way in the second category. And so those men are often very difficult to live with too because they're so obsessed with their career. It's hard to have a relationship with them. And maybe they don't have much of a relationship with their kids, but they're damn good at what they do. And part of that is, is they're smart and disciplined and they'll work non-stop all the time. It's like an obsession. And that's the sort of people who run things. Those are the people who run things. If you concentrate solely on your career, you can get a long way in your career. And I would say that that's a strategy that a minority of men preferentially do. That that's all they do. They work like 70, 80 hours a week. They go flat out on their career. They're staking everything on the small probability of exceptional status in a narrow domain. But it's, it's hard on them. They don't have a life. It's very difficult for them to have a family. They don't know how to take any leisure activity. Like they get very one dimension. Now, it may be that that unidimensionality is the price you have to pay to be exceptional at one thing, right? Because if you're gonna be something like a genius level mathematician and you wanna do that for, or a scientist say, it's like you're in your lab, you're in your lab all the time, you're working 70 hours a week or 80 hours a week, you're smart, you're dedicated, you're unidimensional, and that's how you get to beat all the other people who are doing that. It's the only way. But the problem is you don't get a life. Now, if you love being a scientist and you have that kind of focus of mind, well, first of all, you're a rare person, and second, you're gonna pay for it. But fine, more power to you. But, but it's, a, it's a risky business to do that. You sacrifice a lot for it. You know, and I would say most often, if you're speaking about having a healthy life, that isn't what you do. You spread yourself out more, so you know, you have a family, you have some things that you do outside of work that are meaningful to you and useful. You, you have a network of friends. Um, well, that, that, those three things alone, or four things alone, are plenty to keep you well-oriented. And then if one of those things collapses, you know, everything doesn't go. Now, the, the price you pay for that is the more you strive to optimize that balance, the less likely you are to be fantastically successful at any single one of them. But you might have a very, you know, if you consider your life as a whole, that might be a winning strategy. Success is not for free. Don't expect to be successful if you are not able to commit to yourself. If you're not able to fight against what comes, Life is not always easy. It isn't meant to be easy. Everybody is going to face obstacles at some point in their lives. You can either play the victim and let your obstacles keep you from becoming great. Or you can use them to push you towards the things you truly want in your life. Call it what you want. Failure, struggle, obstacles, we usually avoid these things. Why? Because they are hard. Because we don't like to go through difficult times of pain, of suffering. Because we want to live this perfect life all the time. Anybody that can accomplish anything that is hard, the only separator is, is that they really want to be there. You should not avoid pain, or failure, or adversity. You have the ability to control how you respond to adverse situations. You can decide to turn adversity into opportunity. Without difficulties, we cannot reach our maximum potential. You gotta change your mindset. If you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. It wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. With great struggle comes great opportunity. When you set out to accomplish anything that is difficult, it is going to take mental toughness, persistence, 
endurance, discipline. Your mind prepares you for action. Every moment of adversity is an opportunity to learn to grow. We lose countless opportunities because we do not know how to appreciate and identify these moments. Achieving your dreams does not happen by magic. It is a difficult and uncomfortable journey that requires effort and sacrifice. That's life, man. If you have any mental toughness, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it but still do it. That's what people don't think. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. If you ask me how to achieve my dreams, my answer will be hard work. Personal and professional development requires hard work. Whoever tries to win from a comfortable situation is not going to achieve it. Hard work will open many doors for you. To achieve an extraordinary life, it is essential to invest days months, weeks, years of hard work. You're going to feel stressed. You're going to feel anxious. You're going to feel afraid. You're going to feel exhausted. But if you're willing to push through the struggle and take action to overcome your obstacles, you'll find out that it's worth it. And ultimately, that is what will shape your destiny, one step at a time. Challenge yourself. You are your biggest competition. It is you who you must overcome every day. Not the others, you. Only you know what you have wanted so much. Only you know how much you have to work to achieve it. So go for it. If you want to be the best, Stop listening to others and work on becoming the best version of yourself. People have nothing to do with your pain and struggle. No one is going to do anything for you. Deal with your problems and take control of your destiny so that you excel in your life. Many people dream of living a stress-free life, but in reality, such a life would be boring. To prosper, you must not avoid difficulties. Instead, we must adopt a more competitive attitude. Mentally strong people are not surprised when they experience difficult times. They expect them to happen. You must realize that not every day will be success and rainbows. The reality is that there will be storms and some of those storms will be important throughout life. Do not be afraid or surprised by them. Stop dreaming and fearing obstacles. Go and work to achieve. We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You have to learn to shut off a phone, shut off a computer, shut off a TV. And it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you, where I want to be, where, where do I see myself tomorrow, the next year, the next year from that. And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you want to be so so attached to everything. You want to be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time and go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are. All that shit that I went through in my life to get here today, it is tattooed. 
It is tattooed in my brain. Every day I wake up, I am constantly battling that person that is like, man, you know, back in the day, this happened to you, man. You know, like, you got called nigger so many times and your dad beat the shit out of you, man. And, you know, you, you couldn't read and it's the dad going junior year. All these things start to creep up, even now where you're at today. Every day, you're having to constantly battle. It's not as bad as it used to be by any means, but that person's still there. It, that person always lives. And that's the, that's the point about you have to continue to always challenge yourself every day, is once you transform yourself. And even though I'm still, I'm not running from myself, I'm constantly facing myself. I'm constantly battling myself. I'm not running from them anymore. I used to, but now I'm constantly battling them. So now what happens is once you get to a point in your life where you're able to be on a podcast or be on a TV show and tell everybody how fucked up you are, I will answer any question you want about me. Anything I did, anything bad, good, ugly, I will tell you. When you get to that point in your life, that's where your real journey begins. And you no longer have to have a, a small victory to keep you going. You now realize what your purpose in life is. And you realize all oh, this shit's just part of it. But at first, you need all these different tactics to keep you going because you haven't figured it out yet. Once you figure out that you're in a race amongst billions of people that live in this world, you're in a race by yourself. You have a purpose and it's your purpose, not everybody else's purpose. It is your purpose and only your purpose and it's your race. So then you're like, hey man, I'm doing my thing. I'm doing the best of my ability. What's next? There's no longer these small increments to get through life. Because once you figure out why you're here, it just becomes a process. And the biggest trophy I'll ever get in my entire life, like I turned on a book deal, which we'll talk about soon. The biggest trophy that I ever got in my entire life was me, was really figuring out me. And when I was up on that stage, I realized that. I realized it's, it's not about money. It's not about fame. It's not about being accepted by your peers and everybody else. It's about figuring out who I am and being happy with who the fuck I am. Even though I'm going to be judged for all these things, being able to put a middle finger up to everybody and say, this is David Goggins. And to get to that point, it felt great. And that was all about, honestly, we have to give back. We have to be able to go through our journeys in life, figure out who we are, and help the person beside you. Figure that shit out. Figure out how they can do that themselves. And what I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta fucking tell some people about this shit, man. Like, I discovered something that some people have but they don't even fucking know. All of us have it. But along this way, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't a theorist. I became a practitioner. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of, like, I have a learning disability. Okay. But I'm catching up with everybody. I, I figured that out. I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. I'm like, I got to tell people, man, that, hang on a second, man. You can fucking achieve the absolute impossible. You don't need great parents. You don't need like a private school. You don't need to have this humongous GPA and all this other shit. What you need is the one thing I talk about in my book, which is straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. And that that that's the hard part. That's the hard part. This isn't like some five step process where you can do these five fucking steps. You're gonna end up with this magical world. No. Nah. I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. I'm teaching you how to, like I did 67,000 pull-ups in training for the pull-up record. I was seriously callous in my hands to protect them. What I'm trying to do with people is teach them how to find more themselves to where they empower themselves. I'm all about the underdog. So that's all that, so that's what the book's all about, man. It's all about having that step process and I had to share this with people. I had to stop giving a fuck about people. That was the biggest thing. I had to stop caring what people thought about me. I realized that everybody's fucked up. That's the one thing I realized. I walked around and I put these people on a, on a fucking pedestal. Everybody was better than me. So I can't tell you anything about me because you're going to judge me and I'm going to feel even worse than what I am. What I realized 
Once I calmed my mind down and sat back and looked at how jacked up this world is, once you realize that you are not alone, everybody that's talking to you about how jacked up you are, only thing they've done better than you is they've hidden their fucked up world better than you have. That's all they've done. So once I realized that, if you want to sit back, like for instance, there's all these things that are on TV and we have all these news people judging people who fuck up in life. Yeah, they made big mistakes. But that person who is judging you on TV, I guarantee you that that news person and say, I'm glad that my shit didn't come out. <laughs> but I'm going to judge the hell out of you. I know that about people. So if you want to sit back and judge how jacked up I was and how messed up my life was, Merry Christmas. Go for it. Have a good time. But I'm smiling at you right now knowing you have a secret that you're not willing to share. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on a podcast this big and say, hey, tell me, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I no longer care. And that is a lot of power in that. To be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. And that's, and that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off you. It just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey, man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of not telling you shit. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. The motivation when people are losing, all these people who come out here and talk about how great they are, and I see it all the time, it makes me sick, man. Get real with yourself. People cannot relate to you, man. You are unfucking relatable. When you come out here and say, hey, man, I'm the baddest motherfucker to ever live. Okay, great. Well, I, what am I going to learn from you? You learn from people who are willing to tell you, this is where I started from. This is how much I fell on my fucking ass. This is how bad I used to really be. I still have those moments because why? You're human. We're all jacked up, man. We're all jacked up. And that's what makes my story relatable. I'm willing to let you in to see I'm decently successful now. But I didn't come out like this, man. I didn't come out. That's the story. Is you have to give people just a little bit of hope. There's no hope. When they just see greatness in you everywhere. You have to be able to get yourself down to a level of check it out, man. There's hope for you. That's all I'm trying to give you. Just a little bit. Where we find comfort, that's where I started getting scared. When I started saying, oh, it's raining, I'm not going out there. No, you cannot say that. You cannot do that. You have got to do this. Wherever the comfort was, I went the opposite direction. And over a period of time, boy, it calluses the sh out of your mind. Every morning, your alarm clock rings. You're in a bad mood because once again, you have to deal with track, with routine, with day-to-day -day tasks. You may not know it, but you have become accustomed to being average. You are still in the same place, stuck. Without realizing it, you have become a robot. A being that works automatically without looking beyond its capability. Living like this isn't really living. It's just surviving. We live in a society where mediocrity is often rewarded. I wanted to be a man that detests mediocrity. What story would it be if my fat, dumb, lying to be friends with people, insecure ass, can overcome this? And that what if mentality, that, that dreamer mentality, just would always fuel me. It was true, man. What if I can be, what if I can be a seal, man? Leave fears and doubts behind and change your destiny. Stop making excuses anymore. These excuses are binding you to mediocrity. And staying in that state sabotages you. It keeps you away from your path, your goal. Keeps you away from success. Is that who you really want to be?
You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. Right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. Start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? If you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? Every legendary person that you look up to kept their dreams and goals alive and become unforgettable. What kind of person are you? Get out of your comfort zone. It's how I start talking to myself. Who at 297, who can't swim that great, who's scared of the water, would have the balls, clear the balls to man up, quit a job, and go, and to put everything on himself. No one would do this. No one would do this. You're the fastest around. You're the fastest ever lived. And I just kept using that as fuel and fuel with the right kind of message that I needed to hear that I was never telling myself. And through time, it became reality. It is much easier to hit the snooze button and stay in bed for a few more minutes. But when you stop striving to be better and settle for what you have, you will never reach your true potential. It's time for you to get out of your comfort zone and start saying yes to making changes in the way you live your life. It is time for you to show yourself what you are really worth what you are really capable of doing with just a little effort and discipline. I failed, I go back to scratch. I use some positive motivation. I have like one day where I'm like defeated. But I started realizing this is part of the process. This is part of the journey. I had to realize this is part of my process versus just saying, like I used to, I'm just not good enough. If I'm not good enough, we always say that, I'm just not good enough, and then you try something else. I'm going to make myself good enough and that became my mentality I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself good enough when we were kids we dream of becoming an astronaut a scientist a singer an actor but when we become adults we settle for the norm we settle for what's average and say, this is good enough. Why are we thinking in terms of good enough? We sabotage our big dreams and goals by conforming to what's average. You always have to go for more. Change your mentality. Get rid of obsolete belief and negative thoughts that only keep you away from the right path. The path of hard work, effort, success. Limits only exist in your head. The goal is to rise above average. Do more. Quit cutting corners. Do the things others aren't willing to do. Aim a little higher. Do not be afraid to try a new thing. Do not let people who are incapable of thinking outside the bounds of their average life affect your goals and dreams. Have confidence in you. Do not compare yourself with anyone else. Compare yourself only with you. And try to improve day by day. That's the secret to stand out from the crowd. You have the ability to be a better person. To get out of the routine. To face new challenges. 
to leave a mark on the lives of others. Set big goals for yourself. Execute on bigger things in your life. Take bigger action. Dream massive. There is no direct or easy path to the top. You have to go step by step. Fail, fall, and get back up. You have to work every day. There are no breaks when you want to reach the goal. You have to give your all. Don't be left behind. Self-discipline is everything. If you don't have it, I, I don't look at you right because I know you're capable of more. It's not discipline so much for me. It's all on you. It's all on you. The self part is what's big. Where you're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. And it's how you get through that. It's how you get through that on a daily basis. When that thing is saying, man, I'm 43. I've done so much. You start to become civilized. The refrigerator gets full. You start get, making money and you start, I'm not getting cold anymore. I'm retired. What's in at 40 people shouldn't be playing basketball or football or, or, or being in You start to believe this shit and it becomes in your fucking mind like there's people who are retiring, you know, at 40 something years old or, or 30 something years old. At 43, I'm still putting 100 mile weeks, still doing thousands of pull ups, thousands of push ups because I'm not allowing myself to become civilized. The worst thing that can happen to a man is become civilized. You lose that fucking fight. You, 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 you lose that. Why the fuck am I doing this shit? I'm good. You ain't good, man. You ain't never fucking arrived. And that's just my mentality. You may have more, but you never fucking arrived. You want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people. Period. Listen to every foot strike that hits the pavement. That's how I feed myself. Motherfuckers look for inspiration. Inspiration is found in every first step you take, every grasp of that fucking iron bar. All that shit, all the miles were pulled. Inspiration is found in suffering. In life, a lot of us feed. That we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we fucking got up early for four days, we earned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. It's dead weight. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us have it. The one thing in life you gotta realize is this learn to help yourself. Don't count on other people to help you. We're all being tested in life. And guess what? This is one test you can't cheat on. We all have our own test. Some of us are obese. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are insecure. And the only way to overcome it is for you and you alone to face it. You have to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, guess what you got to do? You got to suck it the fuck up and do it. Stay hard.